let's talk a little bit about uh, infectious diseases. Uh, as I'm recording this in November 2020, COVID-19 is still uh, raging, surprisingly, in the richest country in the world, US. Uh, India, the numbers are magically dropping. China seems to have recovered. Second wave is already there in uh, parts of Europe and so on. So infectious diseases, again, uh, can be related to vector-borne diseases. So we looked at uh, one animation of the uh, projected changes in uh, habitat suitability for uh, mosquitoes uh, by month. And here is a map showing uh, habitat suitability for disease-carrying mosquitoes in the United States. Okay, so you can see that the uh, south East, the Atlantic seaboard, the Gulf Coast, uh, parts of the western coast and into uh, the Midwest uh, Central Plains uh, shows some uh, suitable uh, suitability for uh, Aedes uh, albopictus. Uh, there are many regions of course in the global south which are suitable for Aedes aegypti Egypti and Aedes albopictus and so on. These are different mosquitoes carrying different diseases. There's literature on why uh, some of them evolve to uh, like human blood and uh, some of them bite at night, some of them bite uh, during the day, etc. We will not go into the details but uh, essentially, uh, there is a relation between the warming, for example, up the eastern seaboard here, uh, Lyme disease is uh, become endemic. Uh, so habitat destruction, development into the woods, uh, no predators for the deer. So the deer ticks are carrying Lyme disease. So if you want to go for a nice hike, uh, you have to always be careful about uh, ticks. Uh, so also so into the uh, European uh, continent uh, and up into Japan and so on, right? This is what is expected with warming. Here are, uh, is a nice map. I think this is made by Jonathan Foley, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, you can find it on the web. I think this is from a blog or an article in the conversation. Uh, these are the global examples of emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. For example, COVID is uh, emerging infectious disease, uh, but it's related to the SARS uh, virus, which was responsible for the... Uh, it's related to the coronavirus, which is... Uh, also a species that brought us SARS and uh, so on. Okay, um, look you can see that pretty much every continent here is uh, got some uh, bullet point. So you have West Nile virus, Enterovirus D68, uh, Heartland, Cryptosporidiosis, uh, Ebola, uh, drug resistant malaria, diphtheria, MERS-CoV also came from a SARS uh, virus, and Rift Valley fever, typhoid, uh, E. coli, you name it, influenza, SARS, Nipah virus, uh, enterovirus, human monkey pox, Listerosis, and so on and so forth. Okay, adenovirus, anthrax bioterrorism. So there is uh, lots of work done also to see uh, how uh, viruses spread. Uh, so anthrax bioterrorism is something that is counted here in, in uh, emerging and re-emerging, but a lot of work is done uh, with what is called social computing. Uh, I'll show a map and say what uh, that means. So there are new emerging, re-emerging and resurging with some that are deliberately emerging and that's the anthrax bioterrorism. Uh, so any country would want to know if, in fact, there is bioterrorism and somebody introduced uh, deliberately some uh, disease, then how would it spread? And how would you monitor it? How would you predict it? And so on. Examples of forest-associated emerging infectious diseases. Why do we want to do this? Because we already mentioned multiple times that um, Human beings are not only burning fossil fuel and uh, emitting a lot of greenhouse gases, 
but we are also making massive changes in uh, land use uh, and some like Bill Ruddiman would argue that we started this since the beginning of the Holocene when we moved from uh, hunter-gatherers to agriculturalists and pastoralists and so on. We settled down and built communities and started deforesting and domesticating crops and became large-scale agricultural uh, communities. And uh, from the Industrial Revolution, we became much more technology-dependent species and now uh, the new uh, era is uh, often referred to as the <coughs> <coughs> excuse me anthropocene as we mentioned in the first chapter it's the age of the human so the agent uh, of the disease uh, include viruses like yellow fever dengue chikungunya oropushe uh, siv ebola and so on there is more on the next page that i'll come to distribution their endemic spots uh, africa south america pantropical africa indian ocean and so on uh, hosts or reservoirs are non-human primates uh, so going from monkeys uh, chimpanzees gorillas to humans non-human primates uh, and bats here for example uh, exposure is through the vector mostly or direct uh, from monkeys to so contact with the uh, wild animals. Possible emergence mechanisms, deforestation, obviously, forest associated. Deforestation is a big cause. Expansion of settlements along forest edges. Hunting, water and wood collection in the forest. Dom domestication of vectors and pathogens in the way you build water ponds or cattle and other uh, animals that are host uh, or can uh, breed these vectors and pathogens. Uh, mosquito vectors, pathogen adaptation to new uh, habitats, urbanization and ineffective vector control, uh, forest travel, and so on and so forth. So logging, hunting, butchering, outbreaks, uh, agriculture is also able to bring Ebola to humans and of course alteration of natural fauna. There is a number of them, I won't go through all of them, but you can see Leishmaniasis, which is in South America, comes from numerous mammals carried by vectors, uh, and sleeping sickness, some of these are pretty old, right? You know them for a long time. There is SARS, which became an epi epidemic uh, uh, fairly recently. Uh, this is a map that shows uh, all the flights in a 24-hour period. Uh, right now and obviously this keeps growing because countries like India the domestic flights are increasing uh, literally every day same is true for China uh, and the international flights you can see the massive crowding here in the North Atlantic uh, between Europe and US because Europe also serves as a hub for many of the flights that come from uh, the Far East and then are changed to get over to the US and there are of course flights between uh, US and Asia or uh, via the Pacific and now more and more flights are going over the uh, Arctic Circle or over the pole in fact okay so l the flights are getting longer you have I think the longest flight is maybe now close to 20 hours what is the point of this uh, if you remember how SARS started somewhere here in Southeast Asia and then spread uh, to Canada and so on um, they seem to have a relation to the environmental connecting factors like temperatures, humidity, but also people movements. Aircrafts carry mosquitoes and of course they carry people who are already infected and maybe knowingly or unknowingly they uh, travel with the disease uh, as became very common with COVID which uh, quickly colonized all of uh, Europe uh, of course uh, India and uh, Southeast Asia but now it's pretty much everywhere I think Antarctica is the only continent that is still trying to protect itself from uh, COVID okay so social computing basically takes environmental connectivities and uh, people movements like these flight connections uh, 
commuter uh, pathways uh, and so on and tries to figure out uh, how things spread even if for example somebody came into Miami and released some kind of a uh, infectious disease uh, intentionally uh, you would want to know how it would spread so you would want to know the hubs this is also important because maybe you cannot monitor literally every airport when you have hundreds of airports uh, so then you would want to uh, monitor few key airports which are the hubs for transmitting uh, the disease uh, via these physical connectivities. So there are methods which use uh, Euclidean geometry, uh, computing, now there is lots of AI and deep learning and machine learning and so on that go into uh, deciphering these things. For example, during COVID uh, enormous amount of data has been gathered now uh, as to how it spread and uh, I'm sure for decades to come there will be lots of papers, research uh, papers on uh, how COVID actually spread around the world and so on. Okay, so it is related to climate change uh, but also amplified by people movements. People movements are often related to climate displacements but uh, most often they are related to uh, work, uh, leisure, uh, cultural exchanges, education uh, and so on. Okay, so that's a quick quick run through uh, infectious diseases. Every one of these topics is very broad but we are getting just a brief introduction in this chapter.